Hello, my name is Pablo Requena and today in this video we're going to see how to fit the tuning machines for a classical guitar. So, I've got this neck which is ready to receive the, the machine heads. So we need to be able to make the right holes so that we can fit the machines into the head. So I'll explain a little bit the equipment that we're going to need and then we're actually going to go and fit them. First, starting with the tuners, uh, you will find that they are pretty standard. They have certain uh, basic dimensions even though they can vary a lot in design and ornaments and so on. So, what is important is that you will find that the spacing in between the barrels is 35 millimeters. Again, this is the average, the standard. You might be able to find other ones with different spacing, but this is the, the usual. Then also the diameter of the cylinder or the barrel is 10 millimeters. And also the width of the plate, in this one in particular, is 7 17 millimeters. They can vary a little bit, but you're not going to find any that are bigger than 19. So you know that they range from 19 millimeters to 17. I don't think you'll find any smaller than 17 either. So knowing that, what that means is that the thickness of the head needs to be a little bit bigger than the width of the plate in, in your tuners. So the, tu the tuners are 17 millimeters in width on the plate in this one, which are the ones that we're going to fit, and the thickness here is 20 millimeters. So you know that the plate is going to sit nicely in the middle. You might not have noticed, I have seen lots of guitars, and I find a little bit, you know, it's not so good when the edge of the tuners is sort of sticking outside the edge of the head. It doesn't look so good. And then you have a big gap or a big space in the other side. So it's good to spend a little bit of time working things out so that the machines fit right in the middle. So that's what we're going to be doing. <clears throat> so usually what I do, I have the shape of the head ready and I like putting a little bit of masking tape on top so that I can see the lines that I need to make. So the first line that we need, it's a center line. I don't know if it's clear enough. So actually I'm going to mark it with a pen so that that way we can see it a little bit easier. Okay, that's better. So the center line is the first one that we need. <clears throat> the other one, uh, this part of this half of the pair is the ones that the one that goes on this side. So here, what I will do is that I like having the plate in the middle of this length. So I want to have the same distance from this edge to there and this one to that. So I know I need to bring it down a bit. And I don't need to be super accurate, I just want to know that it's more or less the same. So here I have 15 millimeters, and up here, I have 16. So I'm just going to move it over very slightly. And now I have 15. And 16. I think that's fine for me. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to mark where the center of the first barrel would be in the side. So just by eye, that would be the center of the barrel. So I'm just going to mark that there. Okay? And that's all I need to be able to now do the markings I need to do on the head. So With a square, I'm going to bring this line over. I'm not going to mark it, you know, I'm marking it with the pen, so I don't want to mark it here 
too much, but I'm going to mark it on the side there. So I have the position in here, and this will be the center of the first barrel. And I've got this mark here as well. So what I need to do is to bring this mark over. So I'm going to transfer this point into the middle and then from the middle into the other side. This might be quite obvious. Sometimes people don't really can see what's going on. Why don't I do a straight line? If I did a straight line all the way across, you see that actually it will not go in the right place because we have a taper in the head. So we need to take dimensions from one side into the middle and then from the middle into the other one. If the head was completely parallel, then we could transfer directly from there. Okay, so that's why we need to use the square to go into the middle line and then from the middle line into the other side. So now I know that the position of this point is the same in both sides. <coughs> and now, like I did before, I can mark this point in here, which it will be the center of the first hole there. And then I'm going to do this with a scalpel because I want it to be an accurate mark. So I'm just going to I'm going to mark it a little bit in the back there. <coughs> and I'm going to do the same in the other side. I don't mind marking it with the scalpel because later on when the guitar is made this edge is going to be rounded so I don't mind having a little mark there. And <coughs> then again the same with the pen, I don't mind marking it because I'm going to do a lot of cleaning. But I want to be able to see it clearly so that's that mark and this is that mark there. So this is all that I'm going to need to be able to start doing the drill the holes here. Now we're going to have a look at the jig. <clears throat> this is a jig that I made myself and they, there are a few options available in the market. You can go into the Stuart McDonald's website and you'll find a nice jig to be able to drill the holes. So you don't have to do your own. I like doing my own though because um, sometimes you need to do or you need to fit a different type of machine uh, because it's a bit special or a bit unusual. So it's good to know um, to do how to do your own. So this one, I'm going to explain how I did it. And what you can see is you have two pieces of plywood, and the upright section it's been screwed, bolted into the base in such a way that they are completely 90 degrees to each other. That's quite important. The other thing that is important is that the top <coughs> needs to be parallel to the base as well. And then we're going to have a look at this block here. You can see that this is just a piece of hardwood that is being bolted into the upright section of the jig. In here what we have is the three holes. They are 35 millimeters apart. Also the thickness of this block here the thickness there, that is 21 millimeters, and then the width here, it's also 21. You can make it a bit wider as you want it, it really doesn't matter too much. Well, it would matter if the trajectory of your drill press is not too long. So, you know, you have to bear in mind that you make this too deep, there will be a deeper uh, length that you have to be drilling, so you have to be bearing that in mind. Then the length of this block is 140 millimeters, and what I did was to drill the holes right in the middle of my block, so in the middle of the 21, and the holes that I made, they are 
10.5 millimeters because if I did it exactly 10 millimeters which is the same as the diameter of the barrels they will squeak because they will go in too tight and also if for any reason as you're doing this in your own workshop using your tools but you know you can do it as accurately as possible but it's very easy to have a slight inaccuracy which means that if the holes were exactly 10 millimeters this will not fit in properly so you can see that this will go in very nicely and there's a little bit of movement which is what I wanted and also the barrels will spin freely then you can also see that because the holes were in the middle the machine heads will sit in the middle of the of um, this plate but now you would say why do you make it in wood because as you drill it you're gonna be damaging it and in the end you're gonna have to make another jig and again and again so you're wasting your time so why don't you do it in metal or do it with wood and put some metal bushings into it well you could do that that's fine and you can see I've got one here but actually I found that if it's made of hardwood what will happen is that the drill bit as I'm finding the hole will damage the entrance of the hole you can see this has been damaged by the drill bit but what will happen is that the, the hole is deep enough so that the drill bit will find the right position so I will have a bit of damage here but this is far too wide to be able to damage the whole thing so what that means is that I can drill every time and the drill bit will go in the right place the jig will help the you will see when, when we do the job the drill bit will be guided into the hole by this sort of countersink that the drill bit is making um, over time now if I did it with metal that would be fine, but what will happen is that the metal um, will end up making the drill bit a little bit blunt in the edge and in the end your drill bit will not be as sharp so I'm only doing it this way because that's the way it suits me but I'm sure you will find your own way so the other thing that I've done in the jig is to mark the center of each one of the holes and that center comes all the way across here I don't know if that is easy to see in the jig I mean in the in the camera I've got the line along here which also comes from the center of the hole and I need that because now we're gonna put the head into the jig so I'm gonna clamp it in the bench and what I want to do is I'm going to use this mark here as a reference to know where it needs to go here so all I'm going to do is to put the, the front face down into the jig and I'm going to make sure that the mark that I did in the head lines up really well with the center of the first hole in this side to keep it in place you could also use a wedge but you can also use use a, a little cut from a dowel because then what that will do is to put pressure all along against this edge now the other thing that is important is that sometimes the thickness of the head might be slightly different from the thickness that you got in this block because every time you make a, a guitar sometimes there are slightly changes in, in the dimensions so what you want to know is that this, uh, the, the relationship of the thickness here and the block is such that when you do the drilling, the machines are going to go still fairly centered to the head. In this case, it is. It's very, very slightly uh, thinner than, than my jig, but it's still fine. So now I'm ready to start drilling, but before doing that, I'm going to put one clamp in each end to make sure that I clamp the whole thing together because I also want to make sure that this edge you see there's a little gap here so I just want to bring everything together so I just got a block with a clamp here Actually, I'm gonna this one. 
again. So it's a bit easy to clamp this together. So now you can see that there is no gap along here, so I know that the front face, or both face, basically the head, is perpendicular to the bench. The other thing is that the holes need to be perpendicular to the side where the machines are going to go in. So that way I know that the holes are going to be completely perpendicular to the horizontal, so that way they will go in perpendicular to the face. So now we're going to come over to the pillar drill and in my drill I've got ready a 10.5 millimeter drill bit and I've adjusted the height of the bed so that my jig just fits underneath. If I leave me a lot of space here then I might run out of, of depth for the for the for the uh, pillar drill. Now the other thing that I have is that the center line that you can see here I've marked along the jig because that is going to help me to work out what is the depth. So what I've done is to set it up on the drill already. And I just want to know that I'm going over. Actually, I think I'm going over too much. So I'm just going to adjust the depth in here. And I just want to go over like a couple of millimeters or so. Okay? And now I'm going to tighten this up and I'm ready to go. So before I do the first hole, what I'm going to do is to roughly put it in the right place and then I'm going to switch on the drill and there's the first one and then the second one put it in so that it's already in the right place, switch it on, and the third one, like that. So, let's see how it works. So now that you have your holes and your tuners will fit in there really nicely and you can see that the gap or, or the space that you have in both sides is fairly similar it might look a bit different because you have a different color plate in here so it might deceive your eye a bit but actually it's quite similar there also it's a tiny tiny little bit of movement so you can adjust that as well if you need to so to do the other side we have everything marked already, but all we need to do is that before we had the neck in this way, now we need to have it in this way. But remember that you always need to have the face down into the jig. Let me clean this up. And like before, I want to make sure that my reference mark in the neck lines up with the first one of the holes from this side this time because we're going to be doing the other one. So we have it there. I 
I've put this little bit of wood here because what happens is that if I just put it there it's just going to be clamping there and I want to have the pressure more or less in the middle so that it forces it up quite well otherwise it won't go so well but putting a spacer in the middle it will do much better then we check and it's actually moved a little bit I'm just gonna adjust it very slightly to there and now a couple of clamps With these blocks, what I've done is to put a little bit of cork on the face that goes against the wood because sometimes cedar is quite soft and you could mark it if you put too much pressure. So that way I can clamp it properly and the cork is not going to leave any marks. Now I'm going to have a visual check. This is nice and flat. The line is still in the right place, so let's do it. So if I stop the drill every time I'm working it out, then I'm saving the block a little bit. These marks come from sometimes if a student forgets to stop, sorry to blame the student, it's very easy to do that, isn't it? But if they stop, uh, forget to stop the drill, then by the time you find the hole, that's when you end up damaging the, the jig. So let's have a look and see how it went. So now we can put our machines in here and see how see how they fit. And you can see that this will fit into here really nicely. So there's quite a few more jobs to do for this neck to um, before it's ready to go in the mold. The next job will be to cut the slots in the front of the face so that the strings can go and meet the, the barrels. But remember that it's quite important that you do this job first and then do the slots because what will happen is that if you do the slots first when you drill the holes you will have the wood splinting and breaking when the drill comes out as it's drilling through so you will need to put in a block to avoid that breakage but doing it this way you know that you got a clean cut for the barrel and then you will have a clean cut for your slot but that will be the subject for another video for now I just hope this is helpful and here you just got a few different ideas so that then you can go and do your own jig 
and do this in your own way. There's many ways of doing this job. Hopefully this one will encourage you and to give you some ideas so that you can do your own. So thank you very much for watching, until the next time.